Number One Angel dropped on March 10th, 2017. This would mark Charlie XCX's third mixtape in total and her first proper mixtape working with A.G. Cook. When I see other angels rate Charlie XCX's albums and projects, I don't see them rate this album as high as I wish they would, and I feel part of this was due to it being overshadowed by Pop 2, which would drop later that year. Regardless of where you rank it, Number One Angel holds an interesting place in Charlie XCX's history as an artist, being an embodiment of her growing frustration with her label following the shelving of her then unreleased and shelved record, XCX World. I want to discuss the history of the record, the tracks themselves, and ultimately why I think this project deserves a lot of credit for helping build out a roadmap for Charlie's recent career. As always, we do not know the full story, we can only speculate and draw conclusions using the evidence we have in front of us. The rollout for Charlie's third record wasn't going entirely smooth. What was supposed to be the first single, After the After Party, featuring Lil Yachty, failed to chart in the States despite hitting 29 on the UK singles charts. In February 2017, performances of After the After Party and Bounce, another track off the unreleased record on Jimmy Kimmel's live show, were met with mixed reception. It is speculated that the reception to these performances were what led to Atlantic hitting the panic button and reconfiguring the entire project. By this point, there was a rift growing between Charlie XCX and her recording label Atlantic Records. Sometime in January of 2017, Charlie XCX announced to Rolling Stone that she was going to drop a mixtape. She said that she was bored and she just wanted to put some music out, but it was becoming clear that it was more than that. Shortly after, she would go on 93.3 and tell the station themselves that the mixtape had been recorded in two weeks and was more like crying into champagne than drinking it. She would also note that Sophie would be featured on the project. In February, it became extremely clear, just weeks before the mixtape dropped, that Charlie was just done. She tweeted, You have no idea how hard it is to release a free mixtape in 2017. Make no mistake, this was a cry for help against a label that was restricting her from releasing the work she wanted to do. It was an indictment of Atlantic Records, and she would later address it in an interview with Vader after the project had dropped. This interview seemed innocuous at the time, but it really did give us a look into the process of reconciliation between herself and the label, and how she pointed out that she'd never want to be an indie artist out of the need for funding. I personally speculate that this was a breaking point for both Atlantic and Charlie, a moment where both parties began to make concessions towards each other. Pop 2, another mixtape, which was released later in the same year, faced none of these issues publicly. I think both projects being well received would later prompt Atlantic to allow Charlie to release Charlie in 2019 and How I'm Feeling Now this year. Number 1 Angel would find itself on many year-end lists and was positively received, this mixtape marked Charlie building her cult following and gaining a place amongst critical pop darlings. Not bad for a collection of tracks recorded over the course of two weeks while wallowing about an album that never seemed to be coming. Now I'm going to talk about the tracks. The album opener Dreamer with Ray and Stara is such an amazing way to open this record. A.G. Cook revealed in liner notes for this mixtape that this track was the one that made them commit to making a mixtape and had a twin named Screamer with a more abrasive sort of sound to it. The chorus is so self-assured and confident, it is such a clean-cut pop gem, then it goes straight into Stara and Ray's verses which just interplay with each other in such a fun way, it just works so well. Ray worked on Charlie's After the After Party, while Stara is actually a big hit maker in her own right, she's worked with The Weeknd, Maroon 5, and Katy Perry. Charlie's bridge just ascends the song to another level, like I cannot speak power to how powerful that bridge is. 3AM Pull Up With Moo is probably the track that could have served as a solid radio single. Easy Fun and AG Cook produce such an energetic instrumental that Charlie just rides down vocally with no effort. Thematically, the song is about turning down a manipulative lover. This song actually most fits the hyperpop descriptor everyone uses today, just from the instrumental alone. Moo's contribution to the track adds a shot of adrenaline before a supercharged final chord 
Morris, one of my favorite tracks hands down. Blame It On You, not to be confused with Blame It On Your Love, continues the themes of 3AM, but rather dwells on how she continues this unhealthy relationship despite knowing that it's clearly bad for her. The highlights of this track have to be the production value and the bridge. The bridge is just such a hype building setup for an explosive final chorus. Roll With Me is a Sophie production and likely the track that could have been for the XEX World project. First performed at a Red Bull event in November of 2016, this track is a highlight off the record. It is a candy-coated, crazy fun continuation of the sound from Vroom Vroom. More than half of the lyrics are yeah, or do you want to roll with me? And you know what? It works! Emotional has to be one of my favorite tracks. It is the closest thing sonically to earlier Charlie work, particularly the Sucker era, and probably one of the best written songs off the record. H.G. E. Cook and Easy Fun are clearly toning themselves down on this track, but it keeps the track honest and vulnerable. The piano throughout the song really hammers in the emotionality of the track. Most people love Charlie for her brash party persona, but when she goes slow and she gives us her version of a ballad, she doesn't hold back either. I Love You Too is a Danny L. Harrell production. He's another producer affiliated with PC Music and he's done such an incredible job on this track. This track contrasts with Emotional by covering similar ground but in another direction. It is loud, chaotic, euphoric, anthemic, thumpy. This bridge though is a shot of serotonin before the synths take up the track and eat us all up. White Roses is apparently one of Charlie's favorite tracks. It's pretty minimalistic on your first listen, but it's a well-engineered track with a chorus that absolutely bangs. It's more atmospheric than other tracks, but it retains a very clean bass line that keeps the song going. I view it as a spiritual continuation of Black Roses off her first record, True Romance. Baby Girl featuring Yuffie is an ethereal track. This track harkens back to her more traditional pop roots. This track was not produced by H.G. E. Cook, and it features Yuffie, someone that Charlie actually adored and idolized when she was younger. I personally find it really cute that Yuffie came out of retirement for the track. Yuffie had been inactive for seven years prior to recording the vocals for this track. Her verse is very playful, and it adds to the song. Drugs with Abra is just such a moment. It's a continuation on the themes in 3AM and Blame It On You. It's yet again about being high off someone's love, but literally this time. What I really like about this track is that it feels like it could have existed on her first record, True Romance, and that it's very dark and very ambient. Abra's verse, like every feature on this record, adds to the track but the breakdown is truly the moment where this record shines. A.G. E. Cook manages to deliver a tour de force of production power on this track. However, the best is saved for last with Lip Gloss featuring Cupcake. This song introduced me properly to Cupcake, who just soars on her iconic two rap verses. This track stood out as one of my personal favorites off Number One Angel, possibly my favorite just because of the production. Sophie, H.G. E. Cook, and Life Sim create this lush and glitchy environment for Charlie and Cupcake to just shine. The chorus and the refrain alone make this one of her best songs, but ultimately, as a closer, this is her best until track 10 surprised us later in the year. To conclude, what can I say about this record that hasn't been said already? It's a stellar piece of pop and deserves way more notice than it already gets. I think this is the beginning of Charlie going out of her way to collab with so many people. It was the first step in getting Atlantic to let her release music when she wants it out, and it's a pretty amazing body of work in its own right. Thanks again for watching my videos. I am so grateful to all of the members that follow me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment with your favorite track off Number One Angel. I'm almost done covering every single one of her projects. I cannot wait to get the True Romance and DXCX World videos out. See you for the next video.